Welcome to part 97 of Persona 4. And in this episode, we're going to go outside and continue on to pass the days by because the 22nd, we're going into the Midnight Channel. Oh, we got cabbage seeds and we got wheat seeds. We need all the wheat seeds that we could possibly get because later on, we're going to need some keys for the chest. Oh, and for the record, if this was the PS2 version of the game, yeah, you might want to save all your keys for uh, Secret Laboratory. Oh. By the way, Adachi does appear here. However, due to the fact that Naoto is in the Midnight Channel, you won't be able to talk to him anytime soon. So on that note, yeah, and for the record, rank 6 is going to be in the daytime. Like, his last three ranks were in the nighttime, and the first two were in the daytime. No, actually, the first one was night, and the second one was in the day. And then the last three were at night. This last one was in the day, and it's going to be at Junez. So, on that note... <clears throat> let's see if there's any new books. Oh. we got to remember to get Sensei's friends before we get into the Midnight Channel. Because that's the only time that book will actually show up. Now then, only reason I'm going to the shrine is to try to catch some more bugs. Because after all, I'm going to try to attempt to do some fishing. I mean, it's not going to be um, easy due to the fact of how the fishing is. But at least I'll have some bugs to catch fish with. Maybe the uh, guy will give me a new rod if I catch a huge fish. Maybe not. I'm not sure. So because I went and read the bug book, if I'd have got a perfect timing, I would have gotten at least six bugs out of that instead of three. Or normally, if I didn't read the book, it would have been at least one or two. But it all depends. On that note, we're going to do Death Rank 3, and the reason we're going to do Death Rank 3 is because of the fact that the higher we rank up Death, the easier it is for any persona that we have to create under the Death Arcana to have some level. I created Matador even though I haven't found Hisano yet. Oh wait, no, actually I did find Hisano, so... I had a level one uh, Matador, but no, I had a level one Death Rank. And again, I'm showing off Hisano, but nothing you do will cause you to miss out on rank. Plain and simple. <laughs> this is, I think, rank three, if I'm not mistaken. And once we get to rank 6, all bets are off, because rank uh, 7 through 10, they're automatic events anyway. In fact, death is an automatic event. So, just go on ahead and just visit her whenever you can, but like I said, you'll probably end up finishing the last three ranks, if not by November. If you haven't started on them early, you could probably finish them all in December, because again, she's going to show up between holidays, the entirety of December, and um, Sunday. So on that note, we just need seven more ranks before we're done with death. I will say this, though. Goodbye. Death is by far the most uh, meh of the bunch. I mean, Hisano is trying to come to terms with her husband's death, and in turn is calling herself Death. Oh, by the way, this is a spend time moment. We're kind of skipping this anyway. No, actually, I'm showing that off because it's a spend time moment. It's not actually the uh, final uh, rank for Nanako. But I will say this. We will actually have Nanako completely ranked up by the time we um, get to the deadline. And the same goes for Dojima. And we'll also have Hadachi done too. 
So on that note, we have practice available, and we could actually go and deal with Yumi also. And we have um, Naoki available as well. But to be perfectly honest with you, some of the persona that we're going to be evolving eventually by the end of the game, I mean, they're going to be really strong and they're going to actually have some benefits, but some of them are nerfed for golden. Oh, and the answer for this is non agitarian No, non agenarian that's what it is. Decrepitarian. <laughs> Seriously, they have that as the first answer. Decrepitarian. <laughs> and you know what? I almost accidentally got that answer, too. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just so funny as hell. Uh, whatever the case, we've got two more days before we actually go and jump into the Midnight Channel, so we might as well make them count. Let's see, we can either get Naoki or we can actually... Oh, that's right. We gotta get Sensei's friends. We're gonna buy the book. And since we got speed reading, we can only just read one of it and be done with it. Let's see. Now we need to go to... Wait, Sonagawa is actually... Um... Hold on, let's check something right quick. We'll check Junez, actually. Or no, we'll just go to the high school. Because, yeah, Hisano's not there. I just realized it. Now, we can actually start Yumi, or we can continue on with Strength. Now, once we're, so since we're going to continue on with Strength, we're going to skip him, as I already did. Because I also did Nanako's Rank 9. That's why it's the 21st, because I went there and completed uh, Nanako's Social Link off-screen. Seeing as how I already completed her social link on the playthrough. And sorry if you heard me uh, standing up. That's because of the fact that my leg is starting to cramp up. <laughs> Good lord. Oh. Of all the times my leg starts to cramp up. And now we're going to go to rank 2 of I. But we're not going to show that off because I already showed up to rank 3 I do believe of I. Anything past rank 3 I'll show off. And we also got our delivery in so now we've got a soma to come into the dungeon with definitely definitely worth it and at this point in time we can't really um deal with the nurse i mean we've maxed out nanako we just need two more for dojima and we're good to go with him let's see Anything else we need to do? Nah, we're just gonna read. We're just gonna read. I just realized we need to max up understanding and possibly knowledge and courage. Oh, we definitely need to max out knowledge because by the time of October, Naoto is gonna be available and we also need a fortune persona. And that's the worst part. Like the weakest fortune persona that is available off the bat through fusion is um god damn it one of the three sisters of fate i mean the youngest one um clotho happens to be the more powerful one and i do believe fortuna is another one fortuna is only available between the 47s and 50s so even then you're still gonna have to actually get it like during um You'll still have to get it during the dungeon or through fusion. Whichever the case. Oh, wait, no. You don't get Fortuna. You don't get uh, Fortune Persona through the dungeon. You get them all through fusion. I forgot. My bad. And I had to let uh, I pass for a little bit. Because there's some things I needed to get before I actually dealt with her. In fact... I wasn't going to deal with her at all because today's the 22nd and guess what I'm gonna do go straight into the midnight channel 
So I'm going to catch some bugs for the last time until we get out of the Midnight Channel. And here's the thing. The next couple of parts is going to be Secret Laboratory. And it's going to be really short because the dungeon itself is... Well, it's only got like nine floors, but it's actually boring as hell. What's the best way to put it? Boring as hell. And I've already mentioned many times that it's boring. How boring? I'll tell you when we get to the dungeon. But for the time being, let's go over to Junez and we need to get ready because I'm not going into the dungeon on the 23rd. The 23rd is practically going to be one of the days where you can meet up with Adachi. However, bear in mind that you've got to get Adachi up to rank 6 by... November 7th, I do believe. No, November 1st. Yes. By November 1st, you gotta get him up to rank um 7, or you'll never be able to complete his social link I'm ever again. So, on that note, and even then, you have to get yeah, um Marie up to max rank, or you will never be able to complete his social link. So, on that note, we're going into the TV and we are going to deal with Mitsuo's dungeon. So on that note, we have a talking cutscene. Did you find out more about Naoto-kun? I see. So he's being stubborn about the case. But it seems like it's rare for Naoto-kun to get so worked up over something. Okay, I've got a good feel for him. I think I can do this. It won't take long for me to find him with my persona, so be ready to follow me once I do. What is this place? It's all sci-fi. Hey, doesn't it remind you of those secret hideouts in live-action shows? Oh yeah! <laughs> I used to watch Featherman all the time when I was a kid. I hear that those are really tough shoots. A lot of the actors do their own stunts, like jumping through fire themselves. Well, it's every man's dream to do that stuff. Yeah, I can understand that. They're action-based, like kung fu movies. And just the phrase, secret hideout, has this exciting ring to it! Actually, when I was a kid, I had my own secret place near the mountain by Yukiko's house. I'd pretend that a legendary kung fu master was teaching me special techniques! Hwata! Got it all wrong. But hey, so this secret hideout thingy came from Naoto's mind? I guess our proper boy detective isn't as grown up as he looks. Alright, let's get going. Alright, folks. That is Secret Base. We have it till October 5th to save Naoto. And bear in mind, there are going to be some changes from Secret Base. As opposed to the PS2. I thought there wasn't any, but surprise, surprise, there actually is. But for right now, let's talk to the dog, pat his head, and he will give us an outfit for Kanji to equip. And that is the Kingpin Duster, which, by the way, make Kanji look like he's part of a biker gang. <laughs> Good lord. And when Kanji wears it, He's like, I need a needle and thread, now! Because, <laughs> like, some of the insignias is coming off, and they're torn at the sleeve, and Kanji's like, I can't wear this, I need a needle and thread now! So what I'm going to do is change some things. We're going to put the Kingpin Duster on Kanji and keep everybody in the cheer outfits, because it's going to be so freaking hilarious. On that note, I'm also going to equip the 
um, metal bat because it is a really powerful weapon. Granted, the accuracy is kind of bad. But then let's talk about the items we need to get. In um, Void Quest, we have the Leaf Pouchet, the Eternal Lamp, and all the uh, and the Calorium, which we can actually get. And speaking of things we can actually get, the Rare Aeon card as well, which will allow you to get everything that is there for a sweet bonus. And that's a very rare card to find. But as I was saying, the first two items, the Leaf Pouchet and also the um, Eternal Lamp, are going to be in the first two levels. The, cal the Calorium, that is going to be the hardest thing to find because Steel Machine is really, really hard to find. And it's a rare enemy in um, Secret Base. No, it's not Secret Base. I mean, um, the Void Quest. And on top of the fact that you have to get it through rare monsters. That's the only way you'll be able to actually run into a Steel Machine without having to fight him. So on that note, we're just going to backtrack a little bit and change out my persona. I kind of had to because the secret boss for Void Quest is actually annoying unless you have two things. One, a persona that, per a persona that repels uh, physicals like Grim Hulka here. Like Grim Hulka, that's what it is. God damn it. Okay, Gramekla, I mispronounced the damn name. And Samael, which could actually nullify Dark. Those two Persona, you probably won't really need, like, per se. But there are other Persona that can actually um, repel Dark and repel Physicals. They're in Void Quest. No, not Void Quest. Um, they're in Secret Laboratory. I'm sorry, I'm getting flustered here. But in Secret Laboratory... Sorry if you hear any noise in the background. Also, you actually would want to get, like, very powerful personas. Specifically, Ragna. You want to get Ragna, and that would be the persona you need to use to hold off the boss that we're about to face. So, before we do, let's also dump off our party members. Oh, excuse me. You want this boss to be as easy as humanly possible. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting the hiccups here. You want this to be a smooth and easy boss fight. So what you need to do is solo this boss. You don't have to. You could try to gain, like, uh, a persona with Markar... With Makarkarn. God damn it, I keep mispronouncing that too. And also with uh, Tetracorn. So both of them could actually protect your party members. But here's the thing, you could come in with one. But if you come in with more than one, it's going to be damn near impossible. Because he's going to just target people. I mean... Soloing this boss would make things so damn easy. And here's the reason why. If you have the persona that has um, reflect or repel, this guy will be easy. Now, see, here's the thing. Unlike with uh, Persona 4... Vanilla, he did not ha no. In this game, he resists uh, physicals, but in Persona 4 Vanilla, he did not resist physicals. As a matter of fact, this boss is a lot harder here than what it is in Persona 4 um, Regular because of the fact that in Persona 4 Regular, he did not resist physicals. If he bounced off um, physical attacks, it would do him more harm than what it did you. Because all the physical attacks he would have would be power. Oh, damn. I did not expect that. Oh, that metal bat is doing its job. That's all I have to say. This is making it so goddamn easy. So on that note, if he starts uh, activating Foul Breath, this is the time you want to switch Persona and switch to something that can protect you from Dark. Or if a Persona has the ability known as 
uh, Tarajia, I think that's that's the name. Tarajia would protect you from getting killed by light and dark attacks. And I think one persona had it, and it's a rare thing. So on that note, just keep this pattern going, and this guy will more than likely kill himself before he actually does, um, well, some damage to you. Now, bear in mind, he did dodge because of the fact of Metal Bat's accuracy. But that's okay. We've got this. Let's just keep the metal... Let's just keep the, uh... Attacks going. And the reason why I'm using Mighty Swing... Because Mighty Swing's gonna freaking hurt. Oh, now he's using Foul Breath again. So let's switch. And we're just going to... I think I'm going to decrease the... I don't think I should decrease the attack on him. I really shouldn't have. That was a stupid thing to do. Because then that'll make it so, so, um... It'll actually it'll prolong the fight a little bit harder. That's what I was trying to say. And even if you did decrease the attack, if you didn't have any, uh... Resistance to physical attacks or did not repel physical attacks here's the thing he will still do a lot of damage so halving his attacks is not gonna help crazy chain would more than likely kill your party all these attacks he's throwing has some devastating effects crazy chain would turn you berserk the uh mind slice will make you forget or was it yeah mind slice will make you forget that what he just did would inflict uh, pain, no, I mean panic, that's what it is. And he'll just keep cycling through until he kills your entire party. So this is the best method for him. And we're pretty much going to win this fight. Ooh. Oh, and whatever you do, do not just auto battle. Because unless you have something that actually resists, or should I say, um, repels Dark, don't auto battle him. Just don't. Because here's the thing about Grimel you know, Grimacala. Grimacala is, in, is weak to light and dark. So trying to just... Um, Battle him uh, by auto battle is a stupid thing to do. But whatever the case, folks, we no longer need to be here at Void. Well, oh, actually, no, we do need to be here at Void Quest because even though I fought a steel machine, it did not drop a calorium. So therefore, I may have to come back here and hopefully get um, calorium. By the way, that skull. That, that bag of bones right there, that is where you're going to get the Gaia Sword. The Gaia Sword is actually one of the more... No. It's not really the strongest sword in the game. It's actually the sword with one of the most highest hit rate. One of the highest hit rates. Late game. That's what I'm trying to say. You need like a late game sword that actually has a high hit rate. But it's got 200. I mean, it's not as big as the metal bat, but it's more accurate and it can get the job done done on top of the fact that if there's any ailments that sword will actually boost the ailments and sorry if you hear loud noises in the background <sighs> sorry about that just sorry whatever the case i'm going to heal and we're going to go into secret base now if you'll excuse me i will be right back Sorry about that, there may be too much noise, but we're going to be going into the secret laboratory. And we'll be probably doing the first two levels. So we're going to get Chie, we're going to get Yukiko so I can show off their new persona that they just had evolved. And we're going to put Kanji in as well. 
Because we need a hard hitter. Thing is, I should have changed up the type of persona I have that I could have gotten a win persona. I really would have. I really could have used Yamato no Orochi for this. But. <clears throat> we're fine with what we got. So, on that note. Let us continue on. And by the way, those sirens, they weren't in the PS2 version of Persona 4. In fact, as soon as you jumped in, it was nothing but silence. And the place doesn't look as colorful as it did. It looks all green with heavy fog. By the way, this is <clears throat> consistency idol and inviting Nyogo. Consistency items weak to dark, inviting Neogos weak to fire, but repels win. Here's the thing. That wasn't the case in the PS2 version. Uh, consistent Nyoko was weak, no, Consistency Idol was weak to ice, and inviting Nyoko was weak to ice as well. So, therefore, they made it a little bit harder to take care of those monsters. But Mudun definitely just made quick work of them all anyway. So we're just gonna put Blight... No, my, yeah, we're gonna put Blight in for Mighty Swing. Because Blight is a heavier strike. And we're gonna place, replace Megiddo with Null Ice. So that way... It won't be hard. No, actually, it'll be a little bit harder to hurt Orthros with ice. So now, I won't have any, um, I would say, uh, weakness to ice when I don Orthros. But everything else is going to be normal damage. Now then, we've got Royal Dancers. They're weak to light, and they resist everything except for almighty physical and, I do believe, um... Lightning. But here's the thing. That wasn't the case in the PS2 version. They were actually weak to fire. So that's the difference there. And I'm only telling you this because of the fact that the uh, versions were a lot different. By the way, that's a repeat battle that I cut out. <clears throat> Shit, sorry if you hear anything in the background, my bad. She's speaking by my door. I apologize for that. And we're going to run into another shadow. And the thing is, they changed the uh, weaknesses for all the uh, enemies. See, that right there, the insolent basalt, used to be weak to lightning. Now it's weak to wind. I think the only other... Thing that was uh, changed was the uh, I do believe uh, the other basalt that was here. I'm trying to remember the source basalt. Yes, the only thing was changed was the source basalt. Other than that, every other enemy that we find here is different. In some. Oh wait, no, and dominating machine. That's another thing that changed. And I'm gonna go ahead and get me an experience up card. Because we need the experience. Everybody does. And by the time we get to heaven, everybody will probably be between level 75 and level 80. And do you want to know why? Because <clears throat> I'm going to have to go back and try to go through um, Void Quest. And more importantly, I'm going to have to come back here to um a secret laboratory to get the hidden boss there now then source basalt it was weak to fire before no it's weak to fire here but in the original game it actually was weak to ice so it didn't really matter at the end of the day bye <clears throat> the time we get to heaven Things will probably be a little bit different as far as the enemies goes, but things will be the same as Heaven is concerned. Heaven has 
uh, not changed at all. This dungeon has, because this was literally plagued with green smoke. And ugh, it was the most drab and boring dungeon. It still is. And that's the thing I forgot to mention, why it's so drab and boring. You see, just like with uh, Void Quest, sorry if you hear anything in the background, um, just like with Void Quest, you need to make sure that every key goes to every chest correctly. I do believe in the PS2 version, and if I remember correctly, the key item is hidden behind a golden chest in the PS2. In the sixth floor. Yeah, this actually offers backtracking. That's why it's so goddamn boring. You could get to the fourth floor if you want to, but guess what? The enemy, you know, the um, mid boss is in the fourth floor, and the way to get to Naoto is in the fourth floor as well. By the way, I've actually fused Fortuna off screen. <clears throat> but, um,. The uh, fact that you have to go to the 6th floor, get the key, go back down to the 4th floor, that's really tedious. At least Golden has the decency to cut going down one floor by much. But at least for the most part, you don't have to worry about um, going down two floors instead of, full, instead of like going down one. But then you'll have to go back up a couple of floors as soon as you beat the enemy on the fourth floor. So to save yourself some time, I'm going to end up skipping the, uh, si here's the thing, come part 98, when I get to the um, fourth floor to get the mid boss, I'm going to skip going up to the sixth floor since you probably will already see it and go straight to the seventh and eighth and beat Naoto in the ninth. So yeah, this is only going to be three parts. The second part is me going to the sixth floor and the third part is me actually getting the mid boss. So here's the other thing. Some of these enemies have counter strike as their skills. The Basalts also has um, more Berserk skills and also skills that they also actually focus on an aberration as well. So bear that in mind when you try calling yourself coming over here. Enemy down. Nice anyway, what my uh, character is wearing you is the, the cheer outfit. Hmm? Oh, and this is Teddy's uh, cavalry attack. And the cavalry attack, ladies and gentlemen, is something I had to show off. Not only that, but also Rise joining in to the all out attack. The cavalry attack is when random characters in the background can come in and attack. Like, for instance, Teddy would actually come in on his roller skates, Kanji would show up on his bike, everybody else would show up on their mopeds, save for you. Whoever's in the back row, and they have themselves <clears throat> a um, motorcycle or a moped, they'll be able to show up and attack. Yes, even Naoto, because she also has her license as well, but Kanji doesn't. Wait, I'm thinking Naoto has her license. Oh wait, yeah, she's a police officer, so yeah, she probably does have her license. Whatever the case. Tet Raja, that's the move I was talking about, but unfortunately, I don't truly need it because we already have a lot of healing items and Sami Rakarm. I mean, yeah, that's going to come back to haunt me, but at the end of the day, Yukiko's only got a few more levels left before we reach Salvation, and that is something that is fantastic. Salvation is a damn good move. I cannot stress enough. Now then, um... We're just gonna be walking past these enemies here, and the Kan- Kanji's little suit that he has, that is the Kingpin Duster. It is a purple gang- biker gang suit, and even though Kanji's not in a biker gang, 
it's basically specifically for him. Yukiko has the Sukekage, which is basically the, um, the kimono that she's wearing right now. And Chie has wearing the cheer outfit. Like, Chie, Yukiko, Naoto when she joins the team, and Teddy, they all wear cheerleading outfits. Like, female cheerleading outfits. Oh, right, and now for the bonus monster. Oh, God have mercy. And opulent hand is resistant to fire and nullifies everything except for physicals and flattering hoberly drains fire and is weak to ice that's the only thing that didn't change opulent hand looks like more like a treasure demon but at the same vein <clears throat> um, they also oh that's right opulent hand has a counter strike. I thought something was strange about that. Oh no, that's actually not just opulent hand. It's also the um It's also the smiling Haberly. They they have counter strike too, so that explains why um Maneuvers are getting repelled back to them. Aw, oh, crap. We just made him drain. Um, you know what? Screw it. Black spot. Um. Ooh. Well, we can just spam fire on him because everything else is not going to help. Um. <clears throat> oh wait, I think I do have something for that. Let's just hit him with an Agiadine and just be done with it. And it's resistant. Alright, Kanji. It's all on you, man. Oh wait, that's not Kanji, that's me. Oops. Um, We're wearing similar outfits. My bad. Alright, Kanji, it's all on you. Finish him off! And the best way to do that is with a smart bomb. Yeah, he's kind of... He's not immune to Almighty, so that's a good thing. But beware, he's gonna use Masaku... Uh, Masuku Kaja to, uh... Make sure that his evasion is great, so that way he'll be able to escape. And that will take care of the opulent hand. If you see my monetary value grow, it's because I've ran into multiples of them. So on that note, uh, you've seen them once, you will not be able to see them again, because I'm not going to show them off. But they do manage to summon not only um, flattering Harvelies, but they also um, summon dominating machines. Oh, and Chie just got high counter. Fantastic. Oh, and Kanji's got Maziodine. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And pretty soon he'll have Primal Force. It's level up time. Oh, and Vigor Song? Definitely worth it. I just need to uh, continue actually finishing up Risei's um, social link so that she will be able to get all of her abilities available so that way it'll be an easier time for us but for the most part we're going to be going up to the third floor or should I say going down to the third floor that's the thing about this place it's a basement so we're just going to keep going down and every single floor has a siren so that's the only change between this and Persona 4, aside from the chest and the enemy weaknesses. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you guys next time in part 98 when we continue Secret Base. And we'll be going from floors 3 all the way to floor 6 and back down to floor 4 again. I'll try to cut out all the excessive battles, but for the most part, any new enemies, I'm going to show off. Just like I did with Persona 4 Vanilla. So on that note, I'll see you guys next time. Sorry this part's too long. Peace out.